Welcome to the Bud Rebel Show. The Bud Rebel Show is a quite unique show. We try to have two aspects in it. The Bud being a good, fun person and the Rebel side where you're just a little bit different. We have always going to have an interesting character that fills that side and both sides of it. We're also going to have the trending music topics and video topics and new topics we're going to talk about. We're also going to have an idea that's going to make you either millions We'll lose your millions, but it is a unique idea that we'll get nowhere else than the Bud Rebel Show, plus some interesting fact of the day. So before I go any further, I'd like to introduce you, our guest, Nick Dispenza. Hi, Nick. How you doing? I don't know who this Nick Dispenza character is. My name is Cliff Caesar Bugatti from Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. Uh, yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. I, wait, I was supposed to get Nick Dispenza? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who that is. Sounds like some. All right. Well, we are live on the show, so I guess we'll continue live. with Cliff. Cliff, right? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Cliff, I don't know. This is sort of interesting. I, I have a feeling you're Italian. Is that? I'm not even stereotypical, but um, goddamn straight. I, That's I right. I, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Because I have some topics that are maybe related to that to some degree. Oh yeah. Well, so, I'm well, I'm the expert on this right. whole thing. So yeah. Okay. Go so ahead. let me give you something sure. that is interesting. See. Recently, I had a pizza outside my place in the house. Spumoni Gardens? It was just a regular pizza. Spumoni oh. Gardens? i never seen that one. Is that, is that the number one pizza uh, It's place? the place I go to down in Brooklyn. Oh, really? It's okay. the best. It's the best. Okay. I eat four Sicilian slices right before I work out, and then immediately after. Get you fucking strong. Let me wait. Get you, get you in shape. Now, wait. Do you think... Okay, so this is what happens. We had the pizza outside the house here. All right. And it's there like 10 minutes. And all of a sudden, I see a squirrel take a slice of the pizza. Now, squirrel. Yeah, and I'm wondering, are there Italian squirrels and regular squirrels? You have, since you're Italian, have you ever seen anything like this where a squirrel? Now, because I've never, I've had food outside my house, but for some reason, it was a good slice. He took the whole slice. I mean, I'm like wondering, is this like a, like, I don't know what's going on there. It sounds like a bad Lumonti song that you're describing to me. <laughs> you know, what is this, like a Pepe the Italian mouse, uh, uh, mouse or something like that? But I, it's a squirrel this time? I have <laughs> no, I have no clue. Okay. <laughs> I mean, again, I wasn't planning to have somebody that with such be. a traditional Italian flavor, let's say, to my podcast. Yeah. But since you're here, there's a very interesting topic that people always have a controversy. I'm going to bring up something controversial. So just, you know. By the oh, way, I really would refer, please, do not show that emblem on my show. I'm a, I'm a Mets fan. I Which really, one? So this uh, one? No, no, that's, that's really, I don't need to no, see no, that. No, 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 no. The Yankees are the that. only, the I don't only need to team that, that exists, all yeah. right? There's it's really no reason to be here with it. I don't need, you know, again, I would appreciate on my, my director, please don't have any more Yankee no, fans no more on the Yankee show. No more Yankee fans. No, we have Met fans, okay? Yankees are like... Uh, absolutely not. No, no. I don't the, know. The Yankees, the Yankees, the, the most one. dominant team in yeah, all of all of baseball history. And they're from New York. Come on. And it, that's exciting, a team that, like, pays off their players to play. That's exciting. Yeah, the you got to pay, you pay the greats. Yeah. You know, you got you to give them a huge salary. Otherwise, you know, they're not going to do their job. What's See, the, the problem po- with the Mets is they don't they don't pay them nothing, and, you know, they get a bunch of uh, slackers. So what's the point? Queens. What's the point of watching baseball, which is, like, the one who makes the most money? It's not about the talent. It's about if I pay the most money, I got the team all the time. The Mets, on the other hand, in 69, team that no one expected to come out, 86 World Series. They're a team that comes from nowhere and plays the game. Yeah, like the no, Rangers. No, okay, they come out and they win it. Yankees, you like the Ran- them and they have to win all the time. It's like, you know, oh, you know what it's off. like? It's yeah. like the Rangers and the Jets. You know, like the Jets, they've been they've been pretending to screw it up every year. You know, they're just they just they're laying low for for what is it, 53 years. But when they just, win, it's going to be a big day, deal. One day they're going to win. Yeah, they're letting everyone else's heads get big. <laughs> you know, and they're letting everyone else think that they they're winning, and that when they're, in the last second they're going to come in there and just. Clobber them all. You really was. You realize what's going on now. I didn't. I didn't even plan to bring this up today. What? What's going on? But baseball is getting like boxing, because the teams like the Yankees. Nobody oh, yeah. can watch a stupid sport. You can't. You can't figure out what channel it's on. It used to be when I was growing up. It's either Mets nine, Channel eleven, Yankees, and that was it. Now you have to have streaming this service, this service. You don't know, have no idea oh, yeah. how to watch a the, game the anymore. Cable package. I don't, I don't what know cable how any package? Of this, how any of this works? You know, then my my, my nephew because, was telling me to I should stream it online. I'm like, I don't even know how to turn a computer on. And I don't understand stream it. how this and works. And this is all because you're Yankees because they had a that started with Reggie Jackson, a million dollars. That was a million dollars. It was the first yeah. one. They screwed up the whole I game. Could, I could watch my Yankees. 
Yankees. Yeah, how do you watch it? Yeah, maybe illegally, but you ain't going to watch it from any streaming service now. There's no, <laughs> I mean, maybe you're watching it from up in the Bronx, one of the, the boomers there, but I don't. I think you're watching the game there. Yeah, I got family and they got, uh, uh, tickets. We got season passes. Season so pa- I go. I go. Season tickets. Free what are you, a millionaire? Time. I mean, how much does seats cost then, huh? Pretty much, you know. And, and uh, how about yeah. the hot dogs? Yeah. The hot dogs, what, they $50 a hot dog now? I don't even know. Stadium? Money is no object <laughs> at that point. When, when I'm in Yankee right. Stadium, it's just heaven. Listen, it is eight. Kill the sports of your team. By the way, okay, back okay. to back to now. Well, let's see a little comma here for a moment. Pizza. All right, pizza. Yeah. Pizza. Okay. What is the best pizza? This is always a controversial point. Oh yeah, Spumoni Gardens, Brooklyn. Why? Best pizza. Why? Because they just know how to do it right. They're now, authentic. They're from fuck it. All of them are from Italy. They get they just they get it right. That's my spot. That's where wait, I go. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Is it really pizza? Is depends on the person because some like the sauce. Yeah. Some like the cheese. Some, pe- some like the some crust. Some persons are wrong, though. <laughs> but some, some like the crust. You know what I'm saying? So oh, if yeah. you're going with crust, you may not be going for spagoni. Or you might want to go to another place. I, mean, I want a crispy crust. If I want a crispy crust, that is the key ingredient. Am I still going to spagonis? Oh, yeah. They got everything. They got just the right amount of and sauce. It, wait. Just the right amount of crust. And it, it could be j- exactly the way I you want, like I it. I want a spicy Boom. pizza. They it's, have the spice. Oh, uh, yeah. Fra- what are they called? Fraj- what are they called? Fra- it'll, singe your, it'll singe your taste buds right really? off. This You'll is never the, be able to taste anything else again. This is the... I got actually... I got different. I got a different viewpoint here. Oh, yeah? yeah. Who, who, who is it? Somebody All right, wait. From, uh, uh, this was not planned again. I, 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 I don't want to tell you this. Pizza. This was rated the number one pizza place in the world, by the way, just recently. And I'm just... By gonna, who? Some hipsters? I, I don't know. Number one number one place. I'm, I, I didn't plan to do this again. Just because you came on the show. All right. I really it's see It's called it. Una Pizza Napolitani Ooh. in New York City. Number one in the world. In the world. In the world. In hey, the world. Wrong. In Manhattan. What do these people know? These these these, uh, these journalist hipster uh, jerk offs. They don't know nothing about Have you been pizza. there? No. I ain't uh, been you, there. Why don't you taste it? I mean, you just. What, over to that place? Yeah, you replaced nah. it. It sounds like some place that probably. They, 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 surf, they surf like lattes and then the, the pizza's all, uh, you know, whatever. They make it out of. Oh. They make it out of the what? The, the broccoli? What is it called? The cauliflower? Cauliflower. Fuck uh, all that bullshit. No, 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 no. Over here, they do authentic Italian pizza. What's the oven? Thin crust. What's the oven? Is it what, the brick the oven? oven? Is I it got a brick everything. oven? Is it a brick you, oven? Yeah. You Do you work for this place? I mean, it's like you like love this place. No, it's my it's, only, it's the only place I go to eat at all. Really? <laughs> Either that and then the Del Rio Diners, but they, but they close that place down, so I don't go there no more. Not really. My only two spots. I go out there. And then I just hang out with everybody in the neighborhood, you know. Everyone comes by, to, you know, to hang out and see Cliff. You know, I hold the fort down, you know, make this whole this whole place run. Now, yeah. truthfully, what was it? Truthfully, are you really Cliff or are you really Nick Dispenza? Who's Nick Dispenza? I think that's really who you are. When are you reveal? Me? Are you like? Are you like Batman in disguise? Let's let's get the truth out right now, live on this podcast, because you look a lot like. Nick Dispenser. Why? It's because I'm so young. I think because I look so good. You I, can't think, just, I think. Just I think. I think once. I think you once. Perfect you get, regimen. I think once you take that awful shirt off you, and you wear the other shirt, I think Nick Dispenser is going to come out alive. Can we just see what happens? Let's just see what happens right now, live on T, live on this podcast. Let's see what happens when you take that Yankee shirt. Can we see the real Nick Dispenser? All right. This is what we're seeing right now. We're not know what's going to happen. This might be revealed. The true person behind the mask is actually behind the shirt. I think he's getting ready as we speak. And as he speaks, he's got a glass on. Oh! No, no, this is still this is still Cliff, isn't this? There we go. Wait a minute. So now we got Nick. Yeah, sorry. That happens sometimes. I get like a little... Uh... Is it like something? Is this like... Where did, where did, where did Mr. Cliff come from? Tell us know. about him. I've been talking to my therapist about it. My psychiatrist, uh, I just lost uh, my coverage, but I'm going to get a new one and we'll figure it out. So this is now, I mean, does people like know that they really believe that this is your person? Is oh, Nick, yeah. It's Cliff. One time we put out, <laughs> we put out a Cliff note. <laughs> one time we put out like a Cliff uh, video. Um, and then we like, we paid for likes just to like see if we can get people to watch it. And it was something, it was something about a sports team. It was either, it was one of those Super Bowls and, uh. And people were like writing back angrily, like "you son of a bitch," like thinking of <laughs> like so do, being do, serious. Do they think that you're real, or do they think that you know? It's well, a I guess in that, in that one comment section on that one video, they I thought mean, you it was walk real. around as as Cliff in the world, or you walk around as Nick. Like, oh, you sometimes you get mixed up. Yeah, sometimes up. I like I'll black out 
and then you, I come back, and then a bunch of things will be uploaded to YouTube, and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck just happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you know where, do you know where Cliff came from? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, uh, so Cliff came from uh, when I was or, like about 23. I reconnected with a friend of mine from high school. He was from Brooklyn. I'm not from Brooklyn. I'm from Queens. But we were walking around the city. Like, we hadn't seen each other in a couple of years. And then uh, we kind of reconnected. He was an actor. And uh, I started, just started getting into filmmaking. Like, I was putting some some stuff together with a few, like, a few cameras. And we would walk around Manhattan together. And we I just kept doing this voice. It was kind of a Rodney Dangerfield uh impression almost but i was pulling from a few people like at the time i was a pizza delivery boy also and i was kind of imitating some of the things i would hear some of the uh the pizzeria owners say there were these two brothers that used to work there and sometimes they would say some of the most ridiculous outlandish shit i'm like god this is so hilarious to watch and then there was um and then on top of that I, there was a few other people that i was like kind of pulling from in my mind and then, uh, and then, and then we would just kind of walk around the city, and my friend would just ask, like, we kind of came up with the, the name for this character, and then he would just kind of ask me like questions, and this kind of helped me as an actor. He was like, he was like, hey, what does Cliff think about this? And then I would just kind of, in that voice, would just be like, eh, I don't like that, fuck that, you know, like, or, you know, so whatever, you know. Um, we come up with these bits, and we're like, no, nah, we got We got to turn this in like a video of some sort. We'll just have you give your theories, you know. And, and Cliff's been on a few videos. I'm gonna say, if I want to see Cliff, I could see him. Yeah. I a think YouTube channel. Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a YouTube channel, and it, it, there's like, um, there's like, Cli- there's twenty something videos now, you know. So Cliff has gone to the Cliff's gone to that pizzeria. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, well, uh, actually, we, we've, we've, never done a Cl- we've never done a Cliff note at Spumoni Gardens, but it's a real oh. pizza. I've been there before, though. It's a pizza, really, that guy. It's pretty good. Huh? It's like, uh... <laughs> Nick doesn't like as much as Clef. Clef what was was, that? Nick doesn't like as much as Clef. I mean, it's you know the the reason I, I did this whole thing with this character because when I was growing up, when I used to go to school, a lot of the kids from my school were from other boroughs, and the the kids from Brooklyn, including that friend, used to swear that the Queens pizza was not as good as as the as the Brooklyn pizza. They're like, oh yeah, Queens pizza. Oh, oh. they used to always have some kind of a thing to say and I was always like every pizzeria to me tastes completely different and whenever I'd go to their neighborhoods I was like this isn't like at all different than anything I've had up by my house you well, know I think that's why Cliff needs to be around because he can tell you the difference do you yeah, taste so it, it does it taste different as Cliff does though? but it's you know what nice. but when, when Cliff comes around he lets you know right he right. lets you know <laughs> he lets you know so you also were Queen's invo- Pizza sucks so you were involved in the film The Undead. Am I correct on that? I remember you yeah. doing that. I think I saw you as Cliff or Nick. I'm not sure. I think you were both <laughs> What was your role there again? Uh, it was key grip. Key grip. Yeah. So like, for people that don't know what that means, what does a key grip do? Uh, key grips are... <clears throat> key grip is a one of the two departments that make up lighting. Um, so there's two departments. There's the electric department. Um, and the, the department head is... The, the head of that department is the gaffer. And then there's the grip department and the key grip is the head of that department and uh so uh the the difference between them is that electric really in in the most in the strictest form is anything electric on set even down to the hair and makeup people to the lunch like all the electricity on the film set has to be um has to be set up by the electrical department and that's in the most strict union rules uh uh the areas it's not just the lights on set but they're mostly dealing with lights like how much power we're pulling you know from from different power sources how much we have to spread around and how much we're, we're hitting uh, our subjects with and they work with the director of photography to construct the shots the other uh now the grip uh grips are mostly in again in the strictest uh form are usually more about shaping the light using a lot of these uh different filters and different uh the, what we call flags um certain uh just like certain certain uh, frames and stuff like that to either shine light through or to stop light and shape light with. And, and on top of that, they're also uh, in charge of uh, rigging things. So even so let's say usually they don't touch lights, but if there's something that needs to go up really high in a very dangerous spot, they'll be in charge of making sure that light is in like a very is in that spot and safe and nothing comes crashing down because some of those lights can kill you. Well, wow. yeah. So during the filming, I, I didn't get to see all the little things. Was there any like major any problems you could tell us about the, now the behind the scenes that I, we not you didn't know about? I got a major welt on my head. <laughs> I don't know if you see that scar right there. I, that's an uh, undead star. I, I, uh, yeah, it's a scar. It's a, it's, it's a battle scar. I got. Mm-hmm. I was. I put, it was my fault. I put it. I put a. Uh, I put a, a grip head in a place I, I shouldn't have. Uh, 
and then uh, it, it it fell and it, and it hit me. I mean, what there was nothing really heavy on it. It was just the, it was just like this. It's really not that heavy, but it was just heavy enough. I think I saw you with that. I think I saw you with that bandaid on your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, that's, that's from. Wow, so, that's cool. I mean, it, it, it hit me, but it was because I was being careless. So even if the, so even if the film doesn't do as well, at least we'll have that mark that you will, life will we'll know about a, that mark. Ho- about hopefully, it. Uh, hopefully it's it's <laughs> less severe in a few months. <laughs> Askew, uh, where did yeah. you get the idea for that to, for that movie? For the undead? Yeah. Well, I'm the host, so I, you don't have to. You don't. Well, I, I, I ask me questions. Oh, I can't ask. Qu- <laughs> I, oh, Jesus. Okay. No. Is it the hierarchy now? <laughs> Actually, the story of the undead I, is basically about the end of times, mm. and of course, when as it's written in the book that the end, and the end of times, the dead will rise. I'm not going to reveal the story too much. Oh no, but, no. But but yeah. I mean, the idea. It's a great thought to me and I said mm-hmm. why not do something like that and I feel like and I wanted to do it now because things are pretty screwed up now I think in the world and I think it's time that people like have something optimistic in a way that the, if the world ends as a different outlet than we might see you might say so okay. I had this a long time I mean I had this for like 10 years and then I was able to because of circumstance I decided it's time to make another film I did all screwed up so this is the second film on that ah. that was on that level nice. so I wanted to talk to you about some of the more current topics going on to get an opinion about it I don't know if you've seen this Martha's Vineyard Martha's Vineyard mm-hmm. very elite place for those who they are and you know that the quote people that are coming illegally in the border they're in Texas mm-hmm. Florida other places they're, they're in areas where the income level is not as high mm-hmm. and Generally, the people that come, oh, there are good people. There are not such good people. There are people bringing fat and all. There are people bringing not such good people and so forth. But mm-hmm. Texas and Florida have had to take a lot of them in Arizona. So the governor decided that since the places such as New York and, and Martha's Vineyard are, mm-hmm. are, seem to be very accepting of these, quote, illegal immigrants. Yep. They decided to bring them by bus to their little communities. And there's been, like, unbelievable, like, response. Like, this horrible. How could you do this? And I'm trying to understand. It's like if I say to you, I love mm. chocolate, so give me some chocolate. And all of a sudden, I'm complaining there's too much chocolate. Why are these people from Martha's Vineyard who said, Ho, oh, bring over all these people into this our land, all mm-hmm. of a sudden complaining about it? I can't understand it. Oh, uh, So um, I... I think uh, they should have known that they were going to do that because uh, the governors of both Texas and Florida have said that they're going to do that for quite a few months now. They've been saying that we're going to ship them over. They, they've been sending that as a warning for a while, so it didn't really come out of the blue. Uh, the reason they were complaining is because they were acting like it came out of the blue or something, and it's just like, no, it, they, they told you that they were going to do that. So, um, you know, uh, you know, if it's good, if they want it to be in the country, then bring it to this. They have, they're they're yeah. big supporters. I think they should them. just. I, I think that uh, to to make look, it, you you have a battle of ideas. You have one group that says we should send everyone back, and you have another group that says they like uh, that they that we should be more should bring bring folks in, and uh, and we'll we'll see which idea wins. And if and if one group really doesn't want a certain like the the. Um, illegal immigrants in, and they send them to the blue state. I think the blue state should then step up and then uh, do what they what they say that the, they need to do. And so, right. and and so, I mean, uh, they they had to scramble a little bit, but then they that one shipment, if you will, I think it's a terrible way to put it, but yeah, <laughs> uh, that that one um, that one Bro- plane full that they that they sent to Martha's Vineyard. They got everyone situated, and we'll just it's just that they have to. Uh, you no, know, they, they actually should. moved them out. They actually put them in a military base. They're not in Martha's Vineyard anymore. Yeah, I mean, like they, <laughs> but they, but they, they did something ab- about it. So it's like I think they should. I think they should step up, and they should actually do something about it. You know, because yeah. I'm. I always want to say this, and I hate when you have to like make a statement before because it's mm-hmm. so stupid mm-hmm. to me. I mean, just uh, I love people coming to this country. We all agree people should mm-hmm. come and just come to. I don't know what your heritage is. You think about your, I guess it's Italian. Yeah. Um, Jewish people came from around. We always want that, but we want to have people come where we know who they are. Sure. We don't want just people like walking. We don't know who they are just walking through our border. And then yeah. you come back and you're going to come back a year and go to court. And they generally don't come back to court. And throughout that right. year, I mean, they're abusing young people too. They're taking little young people, young girls and young young men, and they're using them as like sex slaves. So, yeah, there are a lot of bad people that are using these kids and the, the drugs that are coming through. I don't understand. I really, I try to understand all the points of view. Really, that's one of my big things. Oh, yeah. I don't understand this point of view of taking people that 
are illegally coming to this country and we're allowing them to come to this country without any idea who they are. I mean, they could be terrorists. I don't even. It doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, um, well, I mean, I think this for. I mean, for my, to to be serious about it, I think uh, so. When it comes to something like drug dealers, like cartels or something like that, like every every race has some sort of a, a organized crime group. So, sure. I, and and Mexico is no different. So they're gonna ha- or Mexico and and El Salvador and some of these other places they have their criminal groups. But I always separate them from like the people who are typically coming in looking for like asylum. So they're usually not the same people. Usually, I mean, maybe I don't. Know, maybe maybe you could find somebody who came in through. The same channels, but usually it's like people who are coming in to, to ship drugs in are just a totally separate like class of people. I feel, but the people who come in usually, in my experience, are usually very hardworking. The, like when I used to work at that pizzeria, especially, uh, all the all the um, there were a bunch of illegal immigrants that used to work there. They worked so much harder than the American kids. Right, and it's funny because all the all the parents used to always complain like, "Oh, these kids, they're fucking lazy." Meanwhile, like these guys would be. Bust in their backs like all day long, and they worked harder than I could, and like anybody else in the in the place. So my whole thing was like my whole thing has always been like this. For the most part, I've I've never had a big problem like with anybody. Like even just even just taking stereotypes into consideration, mostly like Mexican and like like uh, Ecuadorian like people for the most part uh, have never really given me a big problem, and I haven't seen too much. When it comes to like crime and stuff like that, in, in in my experience, especially here in New York, like my whole thing has just been like, here's what I think needs to happen. I think that uh, the immigration, uh, the the actual track to, like immigration, like in our country, should probably change to be slightly easier. But also, you know, you make it you make it so that like you give people who are already here who've been who have been working. Let's say you have like the vast majority of people who are living here have been doing so for. Uh, you know, let's say 20 to 30 years and they haven't committed any crimes, but they've been living under the radar, right? You can go, all right, like, so on one hand, you broke one law, but also you, you haven't been causing a lot of, like, you haven't been, like, committing a bunch of crimes or anything like that. Here's what you, like... Here's here's an opportunity to become a citizen. Like boom. Like I think they should start a program like that and give everyone like a window of time to do it. And uh, I think that would be probably good for those pe- those folks. I think it would be good for the country. I think it would be like good because you have like this entire class of people who be work working. You also wouldn't have people taking advantage of you know like this borderline free labor. Like that's another big thing. A lot of a lot of you know a, a lot of people who are against illegal immigration always m- mention like oh and these places they're just using them for super cheap labor like that's not fair either i'm like yeah no it's great so then like those, those folks would become taxpayers you know it would be it would be a good thing but then also when it comes to the the you know actual immigration policies i just think like it should maybe it should just be easier because there's a reason why people are like trying to bypass the the original system you know and it's like you know, it's maybe some of it's arbitrary like we have to take a second look at it see what i would say i yeah. agree with you yeah that a lot of the people that come in this country are really good people yeah but at the same time, I use that word, but uh, they are lowering the cost of the good people, the people that are in this country. Mm. So a lot of these businesses are hiring these people that are illegal immigrants. They're not paying the other workers for it. They're getting oh, away with that. And then they're not hiring Americans to work in this job. And that's a problem, yeah. number one. And number yeah, two yeah. is that if our borders are open, then what you're doing is, even if it's a small amount, which is happening, of mm. the drugs that are coming in the country, and, and also the other problems, the people, the prostitution, all that stuff that's coming in. So that's from. So I'm saying protect that border, open up legal immigration, make it easy to come to come legally. Yeah, exactly. And that we have a solution. And at the same time, just make sure, you know, we protect people that work here, jobs, and so forth like that. Yeah. Well, now, well, I, well, well the thing is, here, well, here's the thing. If you had, if, because, th- th- like, because, yeah, no, totally. That that's the reason why people will sometimes hire uh, an illegal immigrant to do a job instead of an American because it's like oh I could pay this person so much two dollars an hour instead mm-hmm. of like ten or whatever it is uh, you know uh, so it's like so by making everyone citizens like making it so that it's easy to be a citizen it kind of takes that away so then you know certain businesses True. can't hire that but it will in- increase the cost of some stuff we have to be ready for that burden because it will it will if there's if the the cost of labor goes up and and then uh, the the other what also gets really con. Um, it gets a little bit um, uh, not convoluted, uh, complicated. Is then 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 you have companies they'll start going. Oh, then uh, we'll we won't do spinach over here. We won't uh, you know grow spinach here. We'll just hire people in other countries to do it. Then you have like the shipping things overseas so they can get cheaper labor. So you see, we have to like think about that kind of problem as well. You know. Yeah, and then again, I mean, the biggest problem that you're saying about making the people that are here legal is then all of a sudden they have like a it gives them incentive right at this moment for people to jump over the border. So. There's got to be mm-hmm. some type of – it's got to be tough to become a citizen. Well, yeah, it's got to be tough to become a citizen once you're here so that people don't have the incentive to go across the border. Let me get to a different topic. 
it's been okay. a very big story. If you haven't heard, what? I don't know if you heard about this. No, what's I'm, the something, big story? This is what breaking is news, really breaking news. The queen has passed away. Oh. Yeah. Okay. No, I don't know how you feel about that. Uh, but it's... I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't hear about that. What, what, what happened? The queen, she passed away. Our queen? Uh, yeah, we, no, we didn't have a queen. Queen yeah. Latifah? Queen Latifah. No, it was the queen of England. Oh, oh, okay. And they're making, and honestly, she was a very nice lady. Um, <laughs> she was. She was a good queen. She was there for a long that. time. <laughs> you, know, you haven't heard any bad things that the queen trying to take over the world, because they really can't do that much. She kind of... Did. She didn't really do that. No, this queen didn't do that much. No, I mean, I mean, the other queens. She'd been a queen. She didn't really do anything. She went to royal she things. Little, she was, she a, little, she was a little profile about it, but she did some pretty bad things. I'm sure they weren't. They're not always like. I mean, like uh, what I thought about is like, listen, <laughs> I'm born where I'm born. You know, yeah. you're born where you want. I mean, she's born as a queen. She can't help that she's born the queen. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's you're born. I know it's not tough. <laughs> but, but, but the idea is that she could have done a lot of bad things. She could have gone like, I'm queen. I'm going to do, gonna like make everyone slave. I don't know she couldn't do that much, but, <laughs> but she could have done. So she did a pretty good job being a queen because she's in that position. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and, and when I wrote about this interesting point in my blog, which this is really about the Bud Rebel, Bud Rebel Productions blog, I wrote about it. I'm sort of royalty in a different way, and I don't mean to be snobby right. at all. So I apologize. You know who else is royalty? Cliff Bugatti. No, let me just tell you what. No, <laughs> no because it's no joking aside. I'm Jewish, and I'm a Cohen. Now, a Cohen mm. is related to Aaron from the Bible, who mm. is, I think, you know, Moses's brother. So I got like, you know, some royalty. And I had when the when the, the when the temples rebuilt, I'm doing all the sacrifices. Everyone's going to come to me and all that stuff. I say prayers. And I say, so I have a big role to fill. So in yeah. a sense, we have different royalty. But I, we never really, we never really took up any lands, uh, and we didn't do any of that fun stuff. We didn't get to like any have any of those like you no, know, hats. No, no massacres. No, no hats. None of that stuff. <laughs> no, we didn't do that. So I have understanding of the queen. I wasn't. I don't have a choice because I was. I was born a Cohen. Right. So, like, I understand the Queen's has no choice. She's born that way. And she, you know, as a Queen, she did a pretty good job. And now there's going to be the first King. I know that's going to be very exciting for you. King Charles is now just in, no, you're in charge. So oh, the yeah, world's yeah. going to change very much for us in the I United think, States. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into the fool business. <laughs> I'm going to be a fool <laughs> at the... <laughs> you at get the paid. Royal, oh, yeah, at, you can at, do that. Uh, exactly. Buckingham Palace. Maybe as, maybe as the... Uh, what was his name again? <laughs> what was it? Not his neck. You'd have to do that as the other person. Oh, it was, it was, it was Cliff. Cliff. Cliff, Cliff, yeah. Cliff is no fool. It's going to be very, very popular. <laughs> All right. So I, we are about to talk about some ideas that are going to either make you millions, oh, bring your life to success, or maybe not. But at least there is something new that you will hear nowhere else than on the Bud Rebel Show. Okay. So we're back. And one of the shows, I one of the products I wanted to ideas I want to issue is called discontinue.com. dot mm-hmm. Now discontinue dot com is basically a place that keeps all the items that are getting discontinued. So okay. like later on, you need that an, I guess gaffer or screen that they're not making anymore. You'd go to discontinue dot com for ah, that. Ah, if actually not a bad if, idea. I, like I know, and if Avion Water becomes discontinued for some reason, you'd go to discontinue dot com. To get the water, uh, everything that you idea. want that's these cups that they stopped making right in New York, right? Exactly. You'd go to discontinue.com to buy it, and it'd be one big warehouse, and you'd find everything that you need <laughs> in one place. And what's good about that business model is because it's discontinue.com, you don't really have to worry about <laughs> being the cheapest place because no one else, there's no discontinue.com competing with anybody else. Oh, yeah, no. So the margins that you can make on a website place like that would be amazing. But, I guess the closest thing would be eBay, but that's just like a place where people resell things. I mean, right. Yeah, discontinue would be like you figure you have a team of people that their job is to collect the things that haven't been sold yet. Would it be? Would there be? Uh, would there be um, things that are ret- like? Would there be? Secondhand versions of the same stuff, and would they like separate it? Like, okay, so let's say let's say an entire product is discontinued, but the warehouse still has a bunch. They'd probably buy a bunch of those and hold them, right? Yeah. But then once those start to dwindle, would they also maybe take if someone else has like an old one, like take it and like refurbish it, and it would also be a little bit similar to the way eBay is? Nick, you bring up a good point. I think see, you could add like that. That's gotta, why that's why I have you on the show. I, idea is uh, very creative. I'm, I'm, Thank you. you. Know. Yeah, and it was like going to talk about that part about it also with discontinued.com. 
You know, I, when I did it, actually, what happened is that Radio Shack went out of business, mm-hmm. and one of my customers needed these knobs, and I bought like every single one of the knobs. They gave me the idea, and they can only go oh. to me to get the knobs. So I, 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 I every once in a while I raised the price on it, and they had no choice because I had to get them. Sorry to tell you this. I, I, I don't think you should say this on the, uh, on the, <laughs> on the radio right now. Am I getting trouble Someone's that? running right to the patent office, and they're going to take this idea. Well, I hope but, someone does, and if somebody does want to go ahead and do it, I, as the person on the Bud Rebel Productions website dot com, I will help put it together with them. So that's one idea that I really love to push. All right. The next idea I'm going to give you one more idea for this day is movieclub.com. Movie Club, all right. Now, Nick, a lot of people love to get involved in movies, and but everybody has other jobs, other lives. You don't know how to do it, so, yeah. so forth. And part of the thing is the ambience of the movie. The okay. ambience about being part of the whole group, community. So Movie Club is about that community. Every once in a while, there will be a party that you'd go to, you'd meet other people that in the industry. And the club itself would decide what's the next film, next production. You could start out being, a, uh, let's say, a PA. You might want to be an actor. This would give you a chance to be involved. There would be a certain fee to become part of this, quote, club. But, mm-hmm. it, but the club itself would be involved in a lot of different productions and a lot of fun stuff, and we'd build that community. And, you know, sort of like the Adam Sandler, sort of like what we're trying to do with you know the undead, building mm-hmm. that community of people that work together and enjoy each other's company and build on that. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and I think it would, because a lot of people like that idea of being part of a, quote, community. Yeah, and you, making their fee makes it, like, members only. Right, exactly, like you yeah. You feel like it's you against everyone else. Yeah. It's, the one thing that brings people together is having a common enemy. <laughs> That's the one thing I've learned about the human race. Oh, is this yours? I think so, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so, so, but <laughs> but the thing with, but also be, you know, they bring that up to it, also another you point. You have a special hat and a tattoo, too. Yeah, yeah maybe, you know, but I'm saying with the, I, you know, it's funny, you bring, but it's interesting, you <laughs> know, because I just thought as I'm speaking to you, my, see, my mind thinks fast. You'd have different levels. Oh, yeah. So, like, you know. Like the uh, Freemasons. Like you have. What it's a secret society. Maybe we live in a secret. That's a better. We should do that. A secret, a secret society. society. I, we shouldn't say that. All right. Well, then. I, this whole, I don't want to. I, I was only going to bring up two ideas. But Corey, since you brought up the idea out. of secret society, I'm going to bring them up. Wait. In one part. second. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> one second more. But I didn't mean to do this. This is not. This is a very unusual podcast. I'm going to bring up three ideas. But maybe this will be on the next podcast. This one. I don't even know if this will be in it. All right. But. But this maybe this will be a secret one. But let's so movie club again. Okay. Have different levels. So if you like at the top level, you maybe may meet the maybe the bigger the celebrities. You get more involved in deciding the production. You know, and then the lower not lower level. I mean the the lower, lower level, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You'd get to involved in going to some going less or involved and so forth. So it'd be involved in that. Now, which brings me up to one of my favorite Ooh. ideas, which I really hope I get to do oh. one time. I hope someone takes these ideas and helps me put it together. I just don't have time. The next one is called Prepper's Paradise. Okay. Prepper's Paradise would be a, like a secret club. You'd go to like a community place like in like the woods and you'd learn how to survive. You'd learn how to, of course, yes, we know the gun part of it. Everyone knows that. But also yeah. how to can things, how to, if, you, if you're if you stuck in the woods, what like leaves can heal you, you know, mm-hmm. yoga, meditation, but everything away from this garbage. No cell phones. Yeah. You'd just be like learning the whole survival technique. And it would be like if it built up, you could be in different areas. So you could have one in Florida, you could have one in New York, you'd have one in all the areas and be like yeah. trained to survive in any different world event. Yeah, ecosystem. You drive in every right, exactly. And and maybe it'd be off the grid and you yeah. would just be like you'd have fun, you do fun things that are like All cash. There's no no, no online payments. Right. Yeah. <laughs> But it's also like, you know, can, <laughs> learning how to can things, learning how just to survive off yeah. the ground that you're on. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. it would, again, it would be this would be like a club type thing. So you'd have to be like part of the membership. Right. And so they would check you. So they wouldn't have like these people that were like uh, neo-Nazis join us or like uh, extreme left, you know, left group, whatever. It would just be people that were just trying to have, learn how to survive in different conditions. Have fun with each other. You know, have a good time yeah. without – the big TVs and entertainment and stuff like that. Yeah, the one the one region that you can't do it in would be Arizona. Just those people. If if everything goes to shit, there's, you, there's no surviving out there in the desert. You just gonna th- those Arizona's people. Hot. Those people just you're gonna you're gonna burn to death. That's you know it. you know it's funny that you brought that up because <laughs> I did watch a podcast with, and the podcast was I don't again this I'm was sure not supposed to happen. I apologize if if any had planned what's happening called All Things Considered. Okay, and they talked about how to survive. In the desert. Oh, really? 
Yeah, and how to survive a day in the desert. I do want to. I do want to go hiking in the desert. That's always been a dream of mine. I never, I never did it. Well, you may come, not come back. Maybe that's, that's why. A, maybe, it's a, maybe it's a dream, the last dream. No, I, want, <laughs> I do want to. No, I want to do it. It's, it's so different. I'm, you know, I'm bored of. I've lived here on the East Coast my whole life. I'm tired of uh, just the same old, same old leaves, right. mountains. I want to go. I want to see some mesas and just like. I mean, I was, up. I was in Wyoming. If you want to go somewhere, go to Wyoming. Wyoming or Montana. Right. Montana looks go. nice. I want to go to that that You know that big body of water uh, with that little island that's in the beginning of um, The Shining. That little, it's like a famous little island. Right. It's still there. It looks exactly the same. The trees haven't gotten any bigger, and it's still there in the middle. It's I think it's somewhere in Montana, or like it's somewhere near like the border of Montana and uh, and and like somewhere near I don't know. I think it's in Montana, that area. Yeah. But it looks gorgeous. Well, if you when you go to Wyoming, if you're not a religious person, you find God because when it, mm-hmm. that lightning strikes and there's no towers, no building, the whole sky lights up. Mm. It is such a cool effect. It's better than any film effect you can actually do. And I should film it. It's a beautiful thing. I did that a long time ago with the Cowboys. Thing. So, uh, we are now moving to, quote, trending music and tops. We went a little bit off, okay? We're going to do trending music and trending videos. Are you ready to win a few moments? Trending, okay. Well, we're back now with all the exciting trending topics, music, and videos you probably won't see anywhere else with my friend Nick Dispenser okay hey. are we ready yes now I gotta learn how to use this computer I don't okay I'm learning at the same time thank you everybody right. this is a song that I heard that's very different this is the Arctic Monkeys there'd be a mirror ball I just saw this song it's very different and I'll just see what you think Okay, and this goes on like basically the same way. Mm-hmm. I thought it was very unique, especially with the mm-hmm. tone mm-hmm. and the background. It's repeating the same melody over and over again. It has a little bit of a sound to me, like almost like big bandish, like you know the old times, like maybe different flavor to it. Yeah, a little bit of that. You know, a little, a little the, the, the symbol. So it, I think it's, it's, yeah, it was on the alt countdown today. Just it jumped my. I'm gonna tell you that that the, the lead singer looks just like Robert De Niro in uh, Taxi Driver in that first opening shot. <laughs> looks that's just interesting. like wow, Travis that is Bickle. freaky. I didn't even see that. Yeah. That's really interesting. I mean, I just think it's. I don't know if I like it or not, but as a quote, a Bud Rebel taste. I think it has a little bit of the the Rebel taste of it being a little different. Mm-hmm. I haven't found out whether I actually like in the Bud taste. And this song I just saw, I really like. This is from. Arden J- Jones. It starts out. I'm gonna play a little bit long. I apologize for the viewer, but because it has a, it starts out and it's it's not like again. Here's a song to me, Arden Jones. Sorry, that starts out basically like a little different. It builds up. It's I don't know if it has the rebel side, but it definitely has the bud side to it. Let's say. Sure. Here we go. Okay, so yeah. I mean, 
I really like it. It's really catchy. I don't mm-hmm. know if there's any catchphrase to it, but I don't know if it's it's. I like it. I just don't know if there's any quote rebellious sound to this thing, or it's mm. just very typical. It has a very uh, angsty, very angsty teen sound to it. Uh, I feel like that that has been done like quite a few times. But it's then again, but then again, you know what? Like every generation has an angsty teen like sound. You know, I mean, there's something for the teens of every generation like that. I mean, that's is kind the, of is the voice saying. that it's is it his voice that I find that I find his voice a little different. I mean, it is a, a little. I feel like a that the, that's some kind of a style that I've been noticing lately. That that I don't know. It's the way they pronounce certain words. It's a little different, words. right? Yeah. So it's 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 a generational thing. I feel like it's it's a it's a it's an offshoot of stuff that used to exist when I was in high school. It's a little punky. A little bit of that. It has like that. It's like an offshoot from like the pop punk stuff from the early two thousands that that I that I remember when I was younger. But it's it's it's. It's graduated. It's evolved to something different. Oh, so it's a little bit. Definitely, so, yeah. so we can put it a little bit. Think on, of like maybe bl- list. if you listen to Blink One Eighty Two, he mm-hmm. does that. Here, huh? he does like these weird sounds, you know. So that's that. Okay. Uh, and, and but then he, this person's taking it and kind of higher level to like a higher level. Yeah. Okay, so then maybe I could yeah. put him the Bud Rebel. You should bring that guy on. Is he? Do you know him? I don't know him yet. You don't know? Him? Well, he said, no. He, again, he was on the Alt Countdown. Ah. Now this uh been a little controversy supposedly on the quote a, a movie that's a kids movie. Mm, okay. And I have not even seen this till this moment. We're gonna okay. see right now. It is called The Little Mermaid. It's a different version. Ah, I wanna yes. see what the controversy is. I'm gonna Red headed Little see Mermaid. I haven't seen it. Looks like a mermaid. <laughs> So the uh, so far it looks like a standard video to me. All right, so that's been very controversial, The Little Mermaid. I wonder how they make them feel like they're underwater, even though they're not underwater. Like how they keep the hair doing, you know, moving like it's underwater or like out, you know. You're the you're like the you're they, the talent in the film that's, industry. That's like you know, I'm hoping they did something uh, practical with that instead of just CGI their hair. So we you know, without being so direct, but without being direct, you'd maybe. You know, just not wash it in the morning. Right? So. <laughs> um, so this is fairly controversial. This Little Mermaid. See why? Yeah. What What do you see in that's controversial? I mean, it's obvious she's just not the right race. You know, the Mer people are a very proud people. So the and Mer, there are Mer people you've met. Yeah. No, and uh, they get no representation in Hollywood. It's disgusting. Really? Yeah. And when? Where have you seen these Mer people? Have you seen them when you were? At the visiting that little white room recently? The or? white room? No. Oh, right, the, no, 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 no. It was when I was I was drowning off the coast of uh, of Nantucket. Nantucket. Oh, yeah. oh, that's Nantucket. You mean Mar- by when you were at Martha's Vineyard? By Martha's Vineyard. Yeah. Oh, they had, uh, is that what is that when they had the illegal immigrants there? Yeah, the illegal immigrants actually took me out on a boat and threw me over the edge. And they were like, wow. you know, "Fuck you, Mr. American." And then that's what happened. But you know, I'm. And a you bleeding met- heart liberal, so I couldn't get mad. And so, oh, okay. <laughs> so, and then there's this Mer person saved you. This Mer person saved me and said, "Listen, I." What I color know- was she, by the way? Is she what color Mer translucent. people? Translucent. Yeah. yeah they're oh, not- they're not white or black. They're translucent. Yeah, no, they get no tan down there. Wow. Yeah, it's kind of sad. And and they never put them in a film yet. They haven't put any of these folks in the film. The How- first woman was white. Yeah. You know. And this one appears to be maybe African American. Yeah. Have you? So they're just they're just translucent, and and you hung out with them for a little bit. Yeah, I mean they're you know they're very. Uh, they wear shells, I say. Yeah. They make shell, their own shell, shell body. bras. Shell bras. Yeah. I wonder it's, how they made that. I don't know. I don't, I don't think they have many other materials down there. I think they tried seaweed, but I'm assuming that would break it's, all the time. They can swing with a shell. It's interesting. Yeah. Very well, good. They got, well, they got to cover up. They're still they're still kind of living in the in like the Shakespearean era. They still use they thou. Wait, wait. Uh, oh, pronouns. that's a pronoun. They yeah. Thou. Okay. Yeah, they're a little behind us. Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. I really would. I don't think that's right to say they're behind us. 
a little, they're, they're a different. Little no, they have a different cultural different aspect, culture. Aspect and it's less civilized. Uh, I don't know the civilized. Us. We just don't. We don't respect their, their, their. Yeah, where they come don't from. Respect that. They are, well, with all so due respect, respect. That's yeah. fine. That's you know if they. <laughs> Maybe we should be wearing shells. Maybe that instead of the new clothes, we should be start wearing shells instead. I would do that. Yeah, yeah I'm thinking just that. all shells. Okay, so now we understand the controversy in the murder people. <laughs> now I, I didn't understand it before, but okay, thank you. I appreciate that. On a different topic, this is one of the more popular songs in the metal core. I would say it's called "By Falling in the Metal Rivers. Core." Metal, are, are people falling still metal now? I think Does so. There's happen? a great group called the Cross the White with a towel. I think I heard of them somewhere. I haven't really watched it. Here we go. Very long time. Keep on telling me to pray because I'm spinning like a carousel, circle in the train. Hit the bottom of the bottle. I don't want to feel the pain, but that is all I got for now. I don't want to talk about the voices in my head. Keep on begging me to stay. If I pull the trigger now, then the demons go away. And I know my time is coming, so there ain't no time to waste. So that is all I got for now. I just want to know why he's high up in the air. How does he do that? He's, 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 uh, he's That's meditating. Pretty good. That's pretty cool. That, I mean, that effect of that is that the, that's a black, black screen. What do you think? I don't know exactly how they're making it happen because uh, it's kind of small on the screen. But uh, I, I like, like a, I like the way the video shot. Yeah, it's very. Um, it, it feels very. It kind of reminds me of like a '90s video because I'm I'm a very big '90s fan, and I like the the angles they're using. I like the lenses they're using, and I, wanna, I do like the lighting. How much do you think a video like this would cost? It's expensive. It's a big space they're using, and they they built a whole set around them. I mean, and then a lot of this. I mean. This, I mean, a lot of this again is blue screen type work on this type of thing, right? What I don't do think say? it's blue screen. I think they have him. Uh, well, I don't know how they have him imposed in there, but they definitely have a real. Lo either way, they have to film a real location and move around. So they still had to film in this big space. They had to build that cage um, around him. And I think that the, it's really a great song. It's like really impact. I mean, uh, and the voices in the head. I mean. Mm. I mean, the idea again. I think it may be dealing with mental health a bit on that. How it's how people have definitely, dealt with, yeah, and how people have to deal with that. That brings me to another topic that I wanted to bring up before I forgot. Mm, yes, it's another mental podcast. Health? Yeah, well, I always had to bring that, but I I'll make a joke. Talk about that. Yeah. But uh, no, but there's another pod. There's a podcast I was watching, and it dealt with. And I wish I knew the name on the top of my head. It dealt with the issue about your inner mind and how mm. your inner mind controls what you think. And it's a lot of negative things you hear, like you're stupid, you're dumb, you're not. You know, able to do this, blah blah blah, and how to conquer your inner mind, and how to change the philosophy of what you what you perceive in your life. I just think it's very good in life to be able to conquer that situation. We have that that going on a lot of what we hear. It tells us we can't do things and we can't accomplish mm -hmm. what we want. I mean, Nick, uh, I'm going to end on a note. I'm going to go back about this. I mean, when you were younger, I don't, you mm -hmm. know, I don't know where you started out. But to think that where you start, where did you start at? I mean, in your life. I mean, uh, were you thinking you were going to get in the film industry and stuff like that? And I started out in a hospital. I think we all started out. <laughs> uh, when did I want to get into film? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you're a fairly accomplished person. I mean, people who want to make it in this industry. I mean, you've been in, you've been involved in a couple of feature films, I believe, and yeah. you've been involved in a whole bunch. And I mean, it's scary for a lot of people. I mean, they're probably there's like this, like I was telling you, there's probably inner thoughts in your head. You can't do this. Every all actors, and I mean, you had to conquer those thoughts as a whole. And you want to sure. end with a note about how you were able to do that and make it make it happen yeah. in this world. I remember when I first knew I wanted to make movies. I used to be obsessed with TV and movies, and like I used to watch. There was a couple of go tos all the time. I used to watch a lot of. Uh, um, I used to like the movie Little Shop of Horrors and uh, in like uh, Home Alone. There was a whole bunch of movies I was watching. It must have been like four or something. And I remember my mom was, ex I was trying to ask why um, Seymour Krellborn was played by Rick Moranis. But like, why was that guy in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids? And he has a different name. And my mom had to explain to me the concept of like, oh no, they're actors. They're pretending and they use cameras. And I was like, oh. And once she explained this to me, I was like, oh, I want to do whatever that is. Whatever that, I need to do that. Like, I knew because I knew I liked watching movies. So um, so then I was just obsessed with making movies since I'm, like, a little kid. And I was making movies when I was, like, nine years old. Uh, I'd, like, make my dad film us. Me and my brother, we'd run around, like, make little horror movies and whatnot. But um, I think uh, the the uh, when I really started doing it professionally was probably when I was, like, in my early 20s. I started doing PA work. It was just, uh, I don't know. For me, I just kind of separated my ego from everything because I was trying to make movies on my own for a while and put stuff out and I didn't know anything 
and but I insisted I knew everything, which was a real problem. So after a while, and I used to get frustrated all the time. Like we'd go out to film something, and then like a cloud would come overhead, and everything would start raining, and like I didn't know how to handle it. I was just just a guy by myself. So um, after a couple of uh, mental breakdowns, essentially, I just was basically all right. I'm gonna like I'm just gonna learn everything I can. And uh, I had a friend who kind of took me under his wing and got me on a bunch of film sets that he was producing, like a bunch of music videos and commercials. And then I started PAing, and then and I just went, I went at it like you don't know anything, so just take whatever these people say, even if they're total assholes, just separate your ego from this whole thing, and just learn whatever you can. And then and you know and there were there were tons of assholes, people would like yell at you and like make you feel terrible. But like but I would always try to try to separate my personality from that and just you know not pay attention to any of the background noise, let it get to me. And then over time, I just all the good people would eventually like me and I would, I would learn enough that I could you know, cozy up to like the right people. And then over time I just started working more and more, uh, in, in higher positions. So to summarize, basically, yeah. if you don't mind, yeah. if you, if you had a lesson to give people at the end of the show, I would say it yeah. basically is just like focus, focus. On, on what you want to accomplish and don't let those voices out there stop you from your goals and yep. there are going to be a lot of voices there are going to be a lot of negative energies there will be yep. and, and, and you've got to stay focused on getting to that goal and not letting the world get to you and if in the end if you do that mm -hmm. you'll see success if you let the other people get to you then you're going to have those problems and, and I think that's basically what we have uh, to end the show on that note if people out there can allow themselves to strive even if the world appears to be against them You'll see light at the end of the tunnel, you might say.